This is P. Lackey for your Bible Minute. So let's go ahead and jump into our text. It's from Mark uh, chapter 14, verses 12 to 26. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, the teacher asks, Where is my guest room? Where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left and went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at a table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips the bread into a bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. When he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is the blood of the covenant which was poured out for many. He said to them, Truly I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Well, this, of course, is where we have communion. So first thing I want to tell you about is when they went to that upper room prepared for them. While I was in Israel, I was blessed to go to Israel. And when I was there, we went to where they believe the upper room is. Now, when you get a tour guide in Israel, you get a historian. You don't just get anyone who just decided to do it. They have a master's degree usually. Some some have doctorates. And we went to this upper room and it was amazing. Look at this upper room and I have a picture of it for you. So then we leave the upper room where they believe the uh, the last supper was. And we go downstairs and right underneath, friends, is the tomb of King David. I couldn't believe it. So here's Jesus from the tribe of Judah and the line of David. That's why you have the lineage in Matthew and Luke to show his Messiahship. So we have the the Messiah in the lineage of King David as promised by God, standing in an upper room doing the Last Supper. Supper. Well, the Last Supper was a Passover meal, as you can see here. Well, we sure have Gentile eyes a little bit. In some traditions, like one I grew up in, uh, the thought of the communion was, well, they call it transubstantiation. Well, when a priest prays over the communion elements, the bread and the wine, it magically turns into the literal blood uh, in a literal body of Christ. Well, that's not the case. Well, then Martin Luther comes along and kind of lightens it a little bit, and and you have consubstantiation. Well, when the priest prays over the bread and prays over the, the blood, it doesn't turn into the elements, but the presence of Christ is there within the elements. That's not right either. What we forget, friends, is that Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. It says multiple times it was a Passover meal. Well, the reason why I changed my background, I'm in the kitchen, because when I was in Israel, I was blessed to go to Bethlehem. And there, I wanted to buy my Passover pieces. So I got a handmade plate, and paid, and it's really beautiful. I have uh, cups from the Passover meal. I even got myself the matzah tosh. Well, these are the pieces I want to talk to you a little bit here. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole uh, Passover meal, obviously. Uh, so I want my Jewish friends thinking that this uh, Gentile is going to screw that up. I'm not going to do that. But it's very significant uh, for us as Christians because Jesus took two particular elements in the Passover meal and pointed them to himself, or I should say repointed those symbols to a new substance, which was him. Well, the male prophetically points to Jesus as the Jewish Messiah. He took those main elements. So uh, one of those elements being a matzo and the other one being the third cup, the cup of redemption. When he took the cups of wine, there were actually four cups at the table. And it was a third cup that Jesus took. But that was after uh, he received and passed out bread. And I'll talk about that here now. So here we have this matzotash. It's literally, literally a bread bag that has uh, three compartments. And the, the rabbis will tell you it means uh, three in one or a unity. Uh, and they have different ideas what it means. They really don't know what it is. Oh, it's Isaac, uh, uh, it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Or it uh, represents the, uh, the priests, the people in praises or something like that. But there's like three or four different uh, interpretations of what this means. Well, uh, I believe this represents 
uh, the unity three and one with God, and here's why. So here you have this, in this Masabe, you have three compartments, and you take, during a certain time in a Passover meal, you take the middle piece of matzo, and if you look at this bread, it certainly looks uh, and represents and points to Christ. Well, it's unleavened, first of all, sinless. You see the stripes, and you see this particular one is pierced. You can see through the holes there. I can actually see through the screen here. And what does uh, Isaiah 53 tell us? Read Isaiah 53, you see Jesus. Over 700 years, the prophet wrote, he was pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. He was, Jesus called himself the bread of life to come down from heaven, pointing back to the Old Testament. Well, this piece is broken in half. One is wrapped in linen, and it is hidden in this bag. It becomes, at that point, the afikomen. Or if you're from the South, it's the afikomen. So, no, the afikomen, and that literally uh, means, it's Greek, it means it comes later. And it's not till the end of the meal. Well, at the end of the meal, when this comes back, this uh, afikomen is broken, and the pieces are passed out, and everyone gets a piece. Sound familiar? And Jesus said about that, Next time you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. Then what it says, he took the cup. Well, the cup that comes after the afikomen is the cup of redemption. He says, when you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. This pointed to the Passover lamb. Jesus was pointing to himself who is the Passover lamb of God. So that's where we get communion, friends. So I hope next time you take communion, you think of this, and you think about how God stitched in prophetically the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, which us Gentiles are grafted in, into the meal every year that it's eaten. Uh, that there's a, a place where you remember and you can see the Messiah. Friends, I hope you found this very helpful, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is Pete Lackey for your Bible Minutes.